as they start lap 290. The gap constant at 13.7 seconds. Chio takes another half a second out of the lead that time round. He's doing everything he can. He needs some help from something, someone, somewhere to help close that margin to Shane Van Gisbergen. Stephen Kane has eked away from Lawrence Vantor. Was going to take something amazing from Vantor to get that podium position away. So car 60, the uh, system McLaren's been chasing a little gremlin all day. And they've had to do a couple of little reboots on it. So that's all that was with Will coming into the pits to get that car restarted. Uh, now, you could say that you could just do that on the racetrack and save yourself the time of having to come down pit lane like we saw Alvaro Parent do earlier. Now, why would you not do that on the racetrack, guys? Because if it doesn't restart, you bring up the safety car and you cost the other car a potential win. So why is thinking to just do that reboot in the pits, even if it does cost them an extra 40 seconds? Yeah, and that's actually not the standard operating procedure. You picked up on a cracker there because teams would rather do it out on the track when you've got the issue with everything running rather than having to put it onto the pit lane speed limiter and add another variable into the potential electrical gremlin. We've seen it even as high up as the LMP1 cars at Spa and Le Mans with Porsche preferring Romain Dumas to do that control alt delete while he was rolling on the pit, uh, on the racetrack rather than bringing it down in the pit. So that is a change of normal operating procedure from the McLaren teams working together at the front of the field and brilliantly picked up by Chad down there in the pits. It's a good spot. This is up at the top of the racetrack at the Elbe. <laughs> Taking liberties where he can. With just a few minutes to go in the race and this from on board. Think quick, Chio, think quick. And that's what he did. Think quick, steer quicker. That's remarkable, isn't it? These guys operate at such a high level. Their clock speed is different to uh, everyone else's. It's as simple as that in IT terms. 60 is out, but not up the speed. Uh, through goes Laurent Van Tour. The battered Bentley behind them. Now, that Bentley could do his teammate a bit of a favour here by getting through. Andy Suchek gets through between in front of that uh, Audi and he puts himself between that car and Stephen Kim who granted has pulled out seven seconds but I think the M Sport team would like to see a little more green and white between those two cars Phoenix Racing have shown their class today 2012 winners of this motor race with Chris Meese, Chris Dijons and Daryl O'Young I know Daryl's watching he loves this place he's won it twice this motor race and we'll be back next year he tells us with a couple of Porsche GT3 R's most things should be weapons at this place Darrell Young is uh, I saw him here yesterday uh, he was uh, cruising the paddock and here is the pass now this is not for position but significant in terms of protecting third place for the sister Bentley I suspect the Audi's tyres have done yeah it's just unable to respond to the pace of the Bentley ahead it was going to take some kind of move to get the job done because he was going to have to do it at the cutting and between the cutting to the elbow and then risk being passed again in a straight line. But where they've been so classy is their strategy. They've completed three less pit stops than the two cars in front of them on the road. And they've kept themselves in the game by being smart, by being consistent with a couple of really good driving stints as well. It's a pleasure to watch Lawrence Vantor Winkle Hock was epic. Alex Davison contributed well. Just such a, an amazing team. May they keep coming back to this place time and time again because that's going to be good fun. We talk crazy, don't we, about how in a 12-hour race getting pole position doesn't normally make a lot of difference. How many times has the pole sitter uh, won here? Twice the yeah. leading car has gone on to win the motor race. And in both occasions, by no means has it been comprehensive. So... It's left, and Chio takes a second out of the lead. It's remarkable they're still doing the times they are after 290 odd laps of Mount Panorama. And if you'd suggest to somebody, anybody in this pit lane, that you'd be punching out mid 203s after 290 laps of a 12 hour race, you said that three or four years ago, you'd be laughed at. Oh, you would have been laughed at, you'd been carted away by men in white coats. And the, the resurfacing of the circuit 24 months ago helped the cause, yes, but. The pace of development in GT3 racing is unbelievable. And we spoke yesterday about the goalpost being moved 
with what Shane Van Gisbergen did for pole, and they continue to be so. And don't forget, there is a tyre war. Two different companies here supplying tyres. It's not a spec tyre, so you don't have to. You can't be as conservative as you might want to be as a tyre supplier when it's a single manufacturer. And Pirelli have pulled out the stops, bringing the special VLN tyre that was tested last year in Germany for the rounds on the Nordschleifer. That's what they've supplied to their customers here. They knew they needed something special to take on the might of Michelin around here. And that is why battles between teams and suppliers are always good for not just the motor racing, but also for us at the end of the day, because this is a laboratory at 300 kilometers an hour for Pirelli and the Bentley, the same for Michelin. Through comes the Grove car. It's David Grove behind the wheel of that machine, the Grove Hyatt car. That is a big party in prospect as well. The tension up and down the garage is, is immense, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Because it's still tense in 11 seconds. We've be become accustomed to these last lap shootouts at Mount Panorama. But we, we need to remember, they've been racing for 12 hours. 11 seconds covering two cars after 12 hours and 40 seconds covering four of them is unbelievable it shows how competitive this race has been and how deep the field is that we could even get to that point and talk about the race changing hands in the final half an hour because endurance races of old you'd be winning by six laps yeah and we'd be uh, inventing things to think about tension down in the nismo camp great collaboration between the uk australia and japan to put this program together and should they end up second, it's certainly no dishonour after a victory last year. It's not a bad defence of your Bathurst title. They will look back on the early sessions, I think, at Nissan and just wonder why they couldn't get the balance of the car better in those early sessions. Qualifying 13th ultimately didn't hurt them that much, but there was clearly something not quite right with that new car. That's not the same car that won last year. There have been some revisions and perhaps there's still a little learning process, but it will be back next year. This and Australia have bought the car and it will race again at this race in 12 months' time. And we hope to see it out in some of the late season Aussie GT races. That's the gap between first and second. That's what it looks like on Conrad Strait. It didn't look the force that it was in 2015 for much of the week, did it, the GTR, but it came into its own during the race. Lucio has been magnificent in pursuit of Shane van Gisbergen, a man that, let's face it, guys, has been a, a level apart well, from can much you, of the rest of the, the, uh, the grid. Can you remember any fumble or mistake by the Nissan? No, and, and as far as I can recall, they've only been passed on track once or twice today. A couple of times in pit lane, hasn't quite worked, but they've been immense. Unbelievable performance, 11.8. Chio takes more time out, and he's still going very close to the personal best lap of the car. Seven minutes. The fact Bankersbergen did a 201.5 on lap 23 was another. The lap after that, he did a 1.6, so he backed up that. He's the only car to do a two minute and one in a motor race at Mount Panorama, ever. And he did a couple of them, and that showed their superiority. That was just a warning early on this morning that Bang, we've got this if we need it. How big is this going to be for McLaren, Graham? You mentioned that they haven't won any of the really big international races since 1995. The whole of the GT program is at walking. It's going to be huge because McLaren's first effort at GT3, great looking car, but really wasn't quite the full ticket. Uh, though we, we saw the, the, the car have some fantastic runs, including here, but this is a whole different ball game. And what they're looking for is a 200 mile an hour billboard, and that's exactly what they've got here. Ashley Vettiger has tweeted in using the hashtag B12HR. What's the marks on the windows, the windscreens of the techno cars? It's just a little place where see them there, they've either got some dirt on it or it's a little bit of uh, dirt that's got under the two layers of the tear-offs. You can still see this tear-offs if you look to the extreme left-hand side of the windscreen. You can see a little dark triangle there. That's where the mechanic would get hold of it and peel off the thin film. And that's either just a little bit of dirt that's on there that they haven't wiped off 
Well, they've just got between the two layers and they've just sort of delaminated the two very thin layers of plastic. And these windscreens with the tear-offs were actually built in Together. one they built yeah. in one piece. Well, one, uh, one, the, the, what they don't do is fit the uh, tear-offs to a, an old windscreen. No, that's right. The windscreen is out of the car and the tear-offs. So it lives up to six or seven different layers which have to be, of course, absolutely optically correct. It's a very, very skilled job to get it done. 10.2 seconds, <laughs> but only five minutes remain now. He's, he's going, he's Chio, 203, two last time round. It's only two tenths slower than his best lap of the motor race. We should mention McLaren and bought an army with them here. 15 people from the UK, including a lot of the head honchos of their GT program. Andrew Cocotti, who's raced in this race, is here. Baz Linders, who's taking over their GT program, is here. Dave Eden, who's the head of PR for McLaren Road Cars and their GT program, is here. So they've brought this in force. And it's been an amazing result. It's the first time they've thrown everything they've got at this race. They've had a toe-in-the-water exercise for the last couple of years with Tony Quinn's team to privateer entries. Two-car team, Techno Autosports partnering up. It's been an enormous, enormous program. If we go to the end of the race, we'll have done an hour and 19 minutes safety car free. Already we're at the second longest green flag stint and we have seen the cars performing to their best along with the teams and drivers. 29 different lead changes in the race. That is a record for the Liquimoli Bathurst 12 out between eight different cars. And Chio is still pushing the fastest first sector for the car. If these guys are going down, they're going to go down with honour. Yeah, it's insane, isn't it? With margin 10 seconds. It's not that now. You can never give up at Mount Panorama. People tuned in around the world to the last three and a half minutes. Our thanks to our streaming partners for a superb international stream that has garnered compliments and comments from literally around the globe, taking the 2016 Little Molly Bathurst 12 hours to a bigger global audience than ever before, as well, of course, as being flag to flag here in Australia on seven and seven mates. And still the Bentley pushing on with 11 seconds to go. 2029 for Chio. 8.4 seconds with pulls. three minutes remain. 1.7 seconds out of Shane Van Gisbergen last time round. He is going down swinging. Fastest lap of the car for the day on lap 295. We're on the 296 lap. At the end of this lap, we equal the most number of laps completed in the motor race. And this is why this is such a fan favourite. They race with spirit, and Chio's doing exactly that with two and a half minutes remaining, two laps they will take now to complete this motor race. We've had the fastest ever competitive lap in both qualifying and the race. We're going to have the longest distance completed in a 12-hour race on the mountain. This truly has been a record-breaking and new record-setting edition of the race with more fans to witness it than ever before. That's another one to chalk off. And the 2016 Licky Molly Bathurst 12 hours is going into the history books. This event has turned a corner. It's international and global in every sense of the word. Look at the drivers, look at the manufacturers who are in the top positions. McLaren from Nissan, from Bentley, from Audi, from Mercedes-Benz, the top five. Chio has taken 2.3 seconds out of the leader in the first two sectors of this lap. Yes, Shane van Gisbergen will be in more or less a cruise mode to get home, but it's going to be a lot closer than we thought. There he is. That's the gap. It's visual. So this should be the start of the last lap for Shane van Gisbergen. As he comes through, there's one minute and five to go. It's 2.43 uh, local time, plus one lap. Here comes Chio. What time does he do? It's a 2.02.46. It's five seconds. Five seconds for the final lap of the 2016 Bathurst 12 hour. You can almost see him. He's just over the brow. You just won't be able to see him. Surely not. Surely not. 297th lap of the motor race. A record. There could be no stumble from Van Gisbergen here with traffic. And Chio is on an absolute tear up Mountain Street through Griffins. 
again, the script writers have come up with an absolute classic. If you wrote this down, they'd call it fiction, as they're going up the hill now for what we believe is the final time. And Chio is within sight now. The marshals are clapping Van Gisbergen. Van Gisbergen is enjoying the evening sunshine. And Chio san is still keeping him on point. 1.3 seconds closer in the first sector. The gap now down to under four seconds. And oh. Chio is coming hard. Has he just timed this to perfection? Shane Van Gisbergen. Surely this can't be taken away from Techno now. He's got a clear run ahead of him. Not much traffic to trim him up now, Trilsey. Confirming final lap. Into the elbow for the final time. Shane Van Gisbergen for Techno Autosports McLaren. You can see the Nissan in the rear view it's mirror. A, it's another second gone in the second sector. Chio is absolutely flying. He's Can catching Van Gisbergen erase the memories of Techno in two, uh, 2014. The teams are on the pit wall. Everyone is on the Luke Molly start finish straight. Van Gisbergen will be able to see the bright white headlights. He's got three corners as he comes through the Caltex chase for the last time. He'll just come down the hill towards Maguire's. The crowd, you can hear the crowd over the noise of the racing cars. Shane Van Gisbergen can kick out the clutch. He's going to win it, but just Techno take it in 2016. What a motor race. Chio across the line. 1.2 1. 2 seconds. 1.2 seconds. <laughs> what an astonishing end to that race. That is amazing. Chio threw everything he had at Shane Van Gisbergen. He fell 1.2 seconds short. What a motor race. To complete the podium. Stephen Kane for Bentley. Denied in the final corner last year. Agonizingly close to a podium on debut at Mount Panorama. The famous British mark. Well, they're going to bounce back with Matt Bell and Stephen Kane. Amazing stuff. Shay. John Webb, that was much closer than we thought it would be. Your heart was beating like crazy, but congrats, you've won the 12 hours of Bathurst. How are you feeling? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, couldn't keep the butterflies down for the last hour or two. Once we had that last stop, and we were pushing on. And look, Shane drove amazingly. All the boys have done a fantastic job, and hey, what an awesome introduction for Techno to McLaren GT. Congrats, and can't wait to hear from Shane. Thank you. Last time we saw a major endurance race won by McLaren was 2012, the Barcelona 24 hours. We've seen wins in sprint racing in the United States and in Europe. But uh, the last time we saw a race bigger than this won by the guys from Woking, it was 1995 and it was the Le Mans 24 hours. What lies ahead for that grand British mark? Yannick Dalmas and JJ Leto, part of that. And Masinora Bronx. Sakaya. Correct, yep as uh, part of that squad, an amazing victory. Bentley on the podium. So that's an enormous result as Shane Van Gisbregen brings the 59 car. He set the qualifying lap record, the fastest ever lap of Mount Panorama. Yesterday in qualifying, he won the Alan Simonson Pole Award. He's broken the outright lap, lap record in today's motor race. You have to say that was an absolutely magnificent race and made at the very end there by the fighting spirit of Nissan the Nissan GTR and, uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Katamasa Chio. But this man has just bossed it all weekend. Yeah, what a race. It's been an what inspiring performance from him and the way he's driven this racing car and asserted his authority when he needs it. Barrett has got the winner. Well, Shane Van Gisbergen, what an incredible, what an incredible weekend it's been from pole position through to lap records for the race and through to the win tonight. What a, a gutsy driving effort it's been by you. Congratulations. Oh, just thanks to the team. The car has been fastest all weekend. So to win that on strategy and then pace, it's amazing. So thanks to the guys. Thanks to Jonathan and Alvaro. Big heart, heart in the mouth moment when it stopped earlier, but uh, she hung on for the rest of the weekend. So awesome. It's a real fighting effort all day. Tell me about that Nissan coming up behind you. Were you aware of the Nissan closing? Yeah, we had him covered, so anytime he did a lap, I just stuck the knife in and did the same. So just got it to the end. Bloody great. How good was this car? Oh, it's awesome. This is the car I raced in Europe, so uh, she's a beauty. All right, well, let's have a moment, catch up with John on the team. Well done. And Alvaro Parent gets a Bathurst victory as well on his debut on Wonderful. the mountain. What a performance. Five different brands in the top five for the second time in two years at Mount Panorama. And McLaren becomes the fifth different brand from six 
GT encounters on the mountain. So the diversity continues. Confirm the final results. It was McLaren, and we should mention the first win for Pirelli here as well. They threw everything they had at this weekend, and they delivered in the end. A runner-up result for the defending champions, and Bentley finally on the podium. Phoenix Racing, former winners, fought like anything and got home in fourth and one lap behind in the final race for the SLS AMG for Erebus Motorsport in P5 was David Reynolds. Some walking wounded throughout the field, but a superb 12th outright for the Ridges Class B winner, Stephen Grove, Scott McLaughlin and Earl Bamber. And the Mark Cars Australia car finished line of stern with them for BM Pro Invitational. Jack Camilleri, Morgan Haber and young Aaron Seaton get to Bathurst victory. Seaton wins at Bathurst. That's got a certain ring about it, doesn't it? 21 finishes from 36 starters. A bruising race in the end and a lot of tale of woe to talk about. And there'll be some long faces drowning their sorrows later on tonight, including the 2014 winners. Marinello Motorsport essentially outed on the opening lap of the race. It all started at 5.45 a.m. this morning as we take in our Nissan highlights and what would be a theme for the day, car 59 went to the front. That was turn two, Mikasalo and Nick Perkat didn't make friends early in today's race and that removed both cars from contention. Jared McLeod, the Mark Cars Australia focus, the CCW, uh, CCV car was off. Shane Van Gisbergen dealt with the sun as he went over Skyline. The brands of Donuts had an incident down there at the elbow and there was some wild racing at the top. Cayman GT4 car, number 16, Pro Sport Performance car, all the way from Germany. Survived a wild moment at the top of Mount Panorama. CCV car found the fence again, and this was amazing racing. And bear in mind, with Alvaro Parent behind the wheel, they had an electrical gremlin in the McLaren. The car stopped on pit straight for 45 seconds, had to reset the car at one point. And for a while there, we thought that race might slip away because later, Shane Van Gisbergen got a drive through penalty for speeding in pit lane. The Bentleys look strong from the outset. Erebus Motorsport were in the game all day. Strange miscue in pit lane, cost them some time. And punctures also ruled the roost here on the mountain. This was SVG with a spin in front, Luke Gilden behind the wheel of the JBS Racing Lamborghini. The locals are watching on. 31 Bentley will feel disappointed with their day today, Graham. Both Bentley suffering punctures and what could have been for Bentley, but they'll be happier this year with an overall podium. At least they got one. In the end, they were denied last year. Ferrari had a pretty tough day. They have a massive presence around the precinct this weekend, but couldn't get the chocolates in the end. Mark Sini's Audi crashed. This was controversial. Dubbed a racing incident in the end. And that removed another contender because that number 37, Darrell Lee McLaren, was on the lead lap and was leading the amp class at that stage. Side-by-side -side racing was a feature. 29 different leaders today, a record for this motor race. 17-year-old Austin Sindrick found the wall at turn two. That removed one Erebus car from contention. And this was more wild racing. Wheel-to-wheel, -wheel, Bentley and Nissan. Porsche in the wall, top of the mountain. Crunch. For the EPO Sport car. And that took them out of the day's running. And there really were some damaged cars at the end of this motor race. Chio, one of the highlights was him going around the outside of Lawrence Vantor on Mountain Straight with two wheels off in the grass. And the sister McLaren, well, in the end, they managed to get that car to the finish in ninth place with Will Davison behind the wheel. Solid day after troubles early. Absolutely, but the end of the race was all about Shane van Gisbergen fending off the ever closer tensions of the Nissan GTR 1.2 seconds. What an astonishing finish again.